Kathy Chenna with Tri-Cities Magazine. We are here in the lovely offices of the Fountainhead Network and we would like to thank our sponsor TELUS Optic TV. With me today is Joanne Parnetta and Daphne Herberts and we are talking all things uh, with the Port Moody Foundation as well as what is food security. We're going to get to that definition in just a minute but yeah. ladies thank you so much for joining us today and um, you know Port Moody Foundation is not something that is unknown to us but perhaps we can talk a little bit about the foundation and how long you guys have been around and tell us some of the things that you've been doing over the last year. Daphne, would you like to start? Thank you, Kathy. It, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. We really uh, appreciate you giving the Port Moody Foundation some time this evening. Uh, the foundation has served the community of Port Moody since 1989. Usually the foundation runs between you know 10 and 15 members yearly. This is my, my first year on the foundation. So I am just sort of uh, in the background, so to speak, but I'm learning a great deal from Joanne as she has been on many of the committees and leading many of the committees with wonderful programs in our community. One of which you referenced was the food security program. Mm -hmm. It's something new to the foundation this year. We thought we'd get in front of it and see what we could do to give back to the community of Port Moody. We know this is a topical issue at this time. and. Yeah. Joanne is the actual chairperson of the grant committee and she is responsible for this and um, I know Joanne would be happy to fill us in on the details of this program. Yeah, we, we've been hearing a lot about food security lately, just even as of uh, yesterday I was reading up on it and you know everyone's talking about inflation and there's a recession coming and where are we getting our food next and why is it seven dollars for uh, you know a, a, a romaine you know and that it's just insane for people out there that you know their livelihoods are are changing and different. I can't imagine uh, what people are doing um, and how scarce food is becoming. So Joanne, why did you come up with this kind of an initiative and uh, what did you think about? I mean, there's so many things you could be doing out there. Why right. food? Well, the foundation likes to work with um, other community groups. And this project came to us through a company called Vegapond, who are based in Australia. And they have units which you can put on a balcony, you can put in your backyard, you can put in the community garden. And the idea was we knew that Kinsight was opening at the Springs, yes. and they also had units at the George. Um, CVS has Dista Bomb. And so by having their, these veggie pods, they're actually just very small gardens, and it gives people an opportunity to grow food. Now, this is not going to do your whole, you know, vegetables for the year. Right. But the idea of it was it gave work experience. We worked with Cher as well. Mm -hmm. So there were a number of uh, young men who came down and they had to put the pods together. Mm -hmm. And then they had to fill them with soil. And then they learned about the planting. Mm -hmm. uh, Grow Local was the other. So there's actually been four partners in this. Grow Local mm -hmm. provided the... Um, know-how. So they went and they did uh, planting workshops with CVS, with Kinsight. They produced at the community garden by the police station. They gave that produce to share. Okay. So it went into the food bank so that people could have fresh produce. One of the units ended up in the George and the person who was looking after it actually ended up being quite ill and, and I believe she might have had a hip replacement. The unit, uh, it turned out, really gave her a way to be connected with the outdoors because she could still plant, she mm -hmm. could do things, and even now she's got fall flowers planted in there. Over at Dista Bomb, uh, they, which is a great store where they work with developmentally challenged people, they, and they make soaps. And they make soap. Yes, yes. They make amazing soap. Yeah, soap. yeah, and bath so bombs. And that relation they, to that well, the they relation, soaps. yeah, they, they have, the, they make the soaps there. And the people that work there, they had two of the pods outside. So again, it was an opportunity them for, to, for them to gain some skills and learning how to, to plant, mm -hmm. to look after things, to be connected. And they actually grew salad, which they then had like a big salad part apparently and they you know ate, ate the salad but it also the we, we thought the program 
provide skills for people. So it's not just about growing something that you can eat, but it's learning a skill which then becomes translatable into getting a job somewhere. Right. Um, you know, food security is, is very top of mind right now. People are talking about like going back to the, the gardens, what were they, you know, like they had during the war and mm -hmm. so on. I mean, I know that our current mayor actually has a garden in her front yard that other people have used, raised beds. Mm -hmm. um, if you go around the community, there's all kinds of options to use various planting methods to, you know, just grow a little bit. Right. But every little bit helps. But the, the main idea of the program was, besides the food security, was making connections because the foundation really is about connecting people in the community and connecting, you know, the people from SHARE, working with the people from CVS, working with Grow Local. And through those connections, you build a stronger community. Mm -hmm. So you, um, Daphne said earlier that you're the chair of the grants committee. Yes. So are you um, expecting grants and, sorry, are you, um, do you approve grants that come in yes. so that you can cut checks to community sort of organizations? Is that is that what it is? In a sense. What happens is that the foundation has endowments yes. and then we have money that we raise that produces income and each year we have a granting program that starts usually in January and by April we've given out grants mm -hmm. to various community organizations as well, during COVID, we were part with the Coquitlam Foundation and the Port Coquitlam Foundation of a granting program where uh, the federal government gave money to the Community Foundations of Canada. And between our three organizations, we put $300,000 into the community for organizations that were struggling with COVID. We're hoping that there's going to be another granting program coming from the federal uh, government. But but we have not gotten the final notification yet. And if so, we will be a part of that. Um, the foundation, of the three foundations, we are the smallest. I mean, you know, it's Port Moody. It's <laughs> but, you know, we like to think we're in some ways the most uh, adventurous. One of the other programs that's tied to the food security that we have granted in the past and that may be using some of these type of veggie pods is um, Growing Chefs. And they run a program in local schools mm -hmm. where they again, they teach kids about where food comes from, planting something, growing it, harvesting it, and, you know, the connection to your food and where it comes from. And kids who would never think to eat, like, something green, you know, that because they've grown it themselves, it's like, oh, maybe I will eat this piece of kale. Yeah, there's more of an investment, I think, because it's like their little baby that that's you know, right watering and caring for yeah um, so so i just want you to describe the veggie pods to me because the way you were sort of speaking about it i'm kind of thinking this is something on my on my deck or balcony yes i'm kind of maybe hooking it over something no, it know. comes how, with a tray it it's a tray. it's how like big, how big is well it? the the standard unit i believe is about 19 inches wide and about 30 inches long okay. so it will fit on a standard balcony it has a stand it's accessible if you're in a wheelchair Correct. okay Good. so it's accessible there. and then it has a cover which is like a all-weather so we mesh cover coming in and right. it's self-watering so you it's put water in you put water in, so you could go away for a week and not have to worry about you know your plants shriveling up and dying it's much the same look as a barbecue on your patio okay but yeah. with the domed the roof domed which is right. clear so you yes. can look at what you're growing without lifting the lid all the time so it's a, it's a slick unit yeah yeah, yeah, it really is. And, and you know, I, I do want to give a shout out to the company, even though they are Australian originally, they are in Canada now, and they worked with us to make sure that we could have these units at a reasonable price. Mm -hmm. So we're actually looking as well, there's the, um, there are more community gardens coming, and they are an option in gardens to have them. But the, I, ideally, I think they're really suited for balconies and for people that you know want to grow lettuce and some vegetables, like some carrots. Too, yes, right? small That's living right. spaces. Yeah, so if you really have something in your backyard like this, you don't. Yeah, need you don't need it. So how how can people get one? It, it, like ah. as a resident of Port. Oh well, no, yeah, you can buy them. You buy. Them. You, yeah, you just buy them. 
I mean, you know, we we don't sell them. No, no. So you're putting <laughs> we, but them in, in, we're in putting them, them yeah. to where we see the need it yeah. is great and, and where there'll be benefits down, down the road. Right. Um, but yes, you as an individual person can go online. Yeah, yeah. You, you can online. buy one and do, own thing, and do your own thing with them, right. And also, um, a shout out to Grow Local because they do um, gardening programs through um, over at the community gardens and I believe they actually did one with teaching people how to do balcony gardening mm -hmm. which is what this is. Yeah, no, no, that sounds excellent. What uh, what kind of grants uh, do you see that pass through your hands and when you're looking at approvals? Anything? Well, like what are you looking for, really, at the end of the Well, you know, un unfortunately, and I say unfortunately, we're bound by the CRA regulations, mm -hmm. which means that as a registered charity, we can only give money to another registered charity. Okay. But what we can do, for example, we've done programs through the schools. So uh, we can give money to school district 43 which then then support a program like during covid uh, we helped support mothers who single mothers who were back in school and it was actually helping them to buy food mm -hmm. that you know we could do through through that direction uh, we have granted things from the arts center to um, children of the night um, you know cvs kinsight mm -hmm various community groups. We like to um, try and, and not give money to the same group every single year because there's a lot of need out there. I know that uh, Coastal Music, for example, has recently approached us and they are looking for a grant to do a drum circle as part of a music program with you know with reconciliation as the focus so you know we haven't decided yet because it's a part of our cycle we'll we'll go through for next year but there's a wide wide range of things that community foundations not just the Port Moody Foundation but all across Canada it's a very much a local grassroots movement and the idea even when the federal government gave Community Foundations of Canada a large amount of money during COVID, the idea was to give it to those people in the community who are closest to the needs. Mm -hmm. I think we all know that, you know, that the closer you spend your money to home, the more impact it has yes. and, and also the um, the wiser it's spent. It's a better way to utilize resources that you have. Mm -hmm. And one particular group that I thought was wonderful that the foundation supported last year was the Postpartum Counseling Society. Uh, through COVID, the young new mothers didn't have uh, places to go, people to meet, to support them in this particular time. And the foundation uh, met that need and they came back and they and they spoke of how grateful they were. And as a new grandparent, I, I appreciate that uh, the foundation can, can do, you know, real change in our community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. How can people find out more about the foundation and get involved? What's the website? Well, there is the website. We have a Facebook page. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. So uh, just put, put Port Moody Foundation dot com dot C dot C A. That, yes. <laughs> I think we're dot C A. <laughs> I can never remember. <laughs> Port Moody Foundation, I'm going to say it. It's a we are the one and only. Uh, I'm the only Port Moody Foundation. If you want to find out more, get involved or volunteer, uh, be part of uh, food security even, uh, or lend a hand. You know, you don't know where you're going to find your next volunteer position. I'm Kathy Chenna with Tri-Cities Magazine. Thank you to my guest today from the Port Moody Foundation. And until next time, thanks for watching.